so hello everyone and i welcome you again to our journey of visually understanding quantum computing so last time in week zero i gave you the demonstration of uh, quantum glasses which is one of the visualization tools that we will uh, use in our uh, journey and now today in this video uh, in the week one uh, I will give you a brief introduction to qubits, qubits, and uh, qubits in general. So, and apart from that, I will also tell you the various techniques that are actually used to physically create qubits, right? Because uh, theory is good, but uh, it's important to know how actually qubits are created because qubits are actually the ways of uh, understanding quantum computing, okay? So, that's what we are going to do today and let's do it so most of you must be familiar with qubit so a qubit can be in either zero cat or one cat so zero cat and one cat are two mutually orth orthogonal states that a qubit can uh, take and uh, Apart from qubit, we also have something called qtrit, and there's also something called qquat. So, qubit is a simplest possible quantum mechanical system. So, here the quantum mechanical system is two dimensional, or you can say it's a two level quantum mechanical system where the two possible states that uh, qubit can take after measurement uh, is either zero cat or one cat. Of uh, course, the qubit can be in the superposition of these two states. But if I talk about qtrit, there are three mutually orthogonal states. So it's a three level quantum mechanical system. And uh, as you might have guessed, qquart is a four level quantum mechanical system where we have four mutually orthogonal states so as you go up the order the complexity increases so it's more and more difficult to work with the higher uh, level systems and therefore you see qubit uh, a lot in quantum computing because it's the simplest uh, quantum mechanical system that you can build uh, there's of course qtrit uh, that, that has uh, research going on uh, it's popular. It's not much popular, Qtrit, but yes, uh, the community has its focus on Qtrit as well. Qquart, of course, is more complex and it's, of course, more difficult to work with. Qubit, Qtrit, Qquart, all of these actually belong to something called Qdict. So, Qdict is actually the general term that refers to all of these systems. So QDIT is a D level of quantum mechanical system. So it's a general term that you can use to call any of these uh, three uh, different systems. And note that any of the QDIT system can uh, work uh, for any of the other QDIT system. So it can represent any other QDIT system. So a qubit can actually do the work that uh, QTRIT is doing, but a qubit will require more computational units than qtrit to do the same amount of work. So as you go up the order, uh, the complexity increases definitely, but uh, the computational units that you require to do some computation decreases. So the system actually becomes more and more powerful. So now let us understand qubit and how uh, it is actually developed. So the physical realization of qubit. So coming to the first method, which is superconducting qubits, it's one of the most popular techniques. Uh, and again, we have variants here like transform qubits, flux qubits and uh, the community heavily focuses on superconducting qubits the second topic is photonics so photonics is a wide subject of course 
and uh, we have photonic chips we have linear optics uh, where you use elements like mirrors beam, beam splitters phase shifters uh, for uh, processing the quantum information and photonics uh, has uh, uh, possibly given some uh, really big hopes in recent times like for example the possibility of operating a quantum computer at room temperature so photonics uh, seems really promising and uh, all of us have some basic understanding of optics so photonics uh, can be really explored by anyone so then we have trapped ion method which is uh, basically uh, you take the atoms and then you ionize them with lasers and uh, you trap in uh, them in electric potentials to form uh, a sort of a line of qubits then uh, you use additional lasers to actually the measure the state of the qubits so measuring is the way of actually extracting the output from your qubit and then again uh, there are types of qubits uh, that can be uh, trapped uh, that can be used in the uh, trapped ion systems like uh, optical qubits hyper fine qubits and stuff like that and coming to M NMR, um, NMR is again one of the popular techniques. We again have variants here like liquid NMR, uh, solid NMR, and uh, stuff like that. And uh, these are uh, four really popular techniques that I believe. Of course, uh, there are others, but uh, this is uh, these four are uh, really promising. And uh, uh, I just wanted to give you a brief introduction to these topics that and I wanted you to know that how uh, physical qubits are built. So, you know, you get an uh, understanding of how uh, physically these things are built because you are definitely learning the literature of quantum computing and uh, you are understanding the various uh, aspects of it. But it's important to see how physically these things are built. And definitely, I really hope that you explore these things uh, on your own ahead and uh, definitely you will find content more on these topics but uh, that's it from my side and this week and i will see you again uh, next time in week number two until then uh, take care